concept of that. Call of Duty. We we're going to do Fallout uh, 76, but I thought, you know, by the time I start that, it's going to be, you know, we, we're on a different schedule. So, we got one hour, I guess we can play Fallout until Call of Duty updates, if it's going to be. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, PO'd about that. So, we need to play Fallout. Unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, but, you know. My thing's not gonna update until I get off, so... Ooh, ooh, ooh. high those stacks are, they're just about as high as the mountain. Well, the mountains. Yeah.
So we need to get it to the dorms first.
after subjecting the residents to extremely low frequency white noise, regular intervals through the loudspeaker system. Using the soundproof recording studios and the musicians was an inspired idea. <laughs> Kudos to the vault tech Selection Committee on their shrewdness. by the latest batch of data. It seems that 33% of the subjects are now lapsing into a trance-like state on occasion. When in this state, we're fairly certain that suggestion and programming of the subject can be applied. We've begun testing this by implanting subtle cues in affected subjects, making them scratch their ear or constantly fix their hair. So far, I'm happy to report a 100% success rate on this implementation method. Come on. 
Ah. Uh, of course that would happen. Guess you have a job at making sure it doesn't happen. intentions in the entire vault population without my knowledge. Using the loudspeakers in the dorms instead of just the studios, he subjected everyone to the white noise as they slept. He then implanted combat suggestions he claims came from vault Tech itself. He, he must be completely insane. No observation, no controls. I'm going to have to confront him now and make him pay for what he's done. Half the vault is dead. The other half fighting for its life. Good luck to all of us. And may God have mercy on our souls. Thank you. 
Oh, my word. Is that what I think it is? Why don't you look where... Oh, my goodness gracious. Seems like you've been gone forever. Please tell me you have good news. Oh, my goodness. I must see it, please. Oh, my. It's more beautiful than I could have ever imagined. I can't thank you enough. I wish I had something to give you, a more suitable reward for all your efforts. All I can give you is the frequency to my radio set. Tune in whenever you feel like listening to the strains of an old woman's violin playing. You're a sight for these old eyes. My word! You actually found some real music paper. I didn't even think it possible. Yet, here it is. You've really outdone yourself this time. I knew getting the Stradivarius was a challenge, but this is just incredible. This is all too much. You deserve more than just a pat on the back. Well, like I told you before, I don't have wealth out here in the sticks, but I can certainly provide you something useful. My husband left me something else beside the radio setup. I think you'll find it useful. It's his old pistol. He tinkered with it some and used to practice with it all the time. Now I want you to have it. You're welcome. Just keep it clean. Now scoot. I have... Well, well, look who the cat dragged in. Oh, absolutely. It's the least I can do for all your efforts. Something. Yes, by all means, let's.
Hey there. Hey. What have you got on your mind? Yes, by all means, let's. So now that we've pretty much done everything, not quest-wise though, there's much to do with that. your presence here. Welcome back. Excellent. Very well. Hey there. Got anything? Is a Brahmin. Watch this. Just need to pull this hunk of metal out of the ground. Careful. What if it's armed? Just need to pull this hunk of metal out of the ground. I'll mind my business. You mind yours.
The hell do you want? We're busy. We're trying to find this place up north called Oasis. Supposed to have a lot of good stuff to grab. But we ain't interested in sharing it with every dirty waster that wanders in. So now, we're gonna have to kill you. Yes? What?
Are you all right? You aren't hurt, are you? I'd like to apologize for the rude welcome. Those two have been a bit of a problem lately. Name's Roe. Uncle Roe to most. Welcome to Canterbury Commons. For what that's worth. The, um, Mechanist and the Ant Agonizer. That's just what they call themselves. It's ridiculous, I know. A while ago, we were attacked by the Ant Agonizer, that woman with the ants, obviously. The Mechanist saved the town with his robots. Well, that was all well and good, but I swear their fights are getting bigger, and it's been driving off the merchants. They simply won't leave. Two hundred caps if you can find where the Ant Agonizer and the Mechanist hide and convince them to stop their rivalry or otherwise stop fighting. You only need to stop one of them, really. Nowadays, I think they only stay in Canterbury to fight each other. So what do you say? Hmm, you drive a hard bargain, friend. But seeing how we haven't been able to solve the problem ourselves, fine. You've got a deal, but I expect results. Oh, and please do try to use some discretion. We already have plenty of would-be heroes starting wars in our streets. We don't need another. If it'll help, I'm glad to. But one day there was a crazy woman leading a bunch of ants into town. She said humanity was dead and the ants would inherit the earth, stuff like that. Well, that gave Dom plenty of time to line up a shot or two on the ants. She ran away, but every once in a while she'd stage an attack again. She wasn't much of a threat then. In fact, she was sort of entertaining at first. Gave everyone in town something to talk about. But when the mechanists started fighting her, things got bad. Ants are easy to shoot, but add robots with lasers, it got real nasty. The mechanist used to be our town mechanic, Scott Walensky. Quiet guy, but plenty fierce with a wrench and some solder. Guy used to take care of a robot that protected the town until it got torn up in one of the ant agonizer's lame little attacks. I guess he took it personal because he made a mechanical suit and called himself the mechanist, said he would lead a robot army to fight her. Now he doesn't even respond to his name, and his robot army is more dangerous to the town than the ants ever were. My nephew Derek might know more about them. I swear it's all I can do to keep him from running into the fight whenever they come out. He might know more about where you can find them, but don't encourage... Good luck with... Oh man, did you see it? Did you see it? The antagonizer was all like, fear me! But the mechanist was all, stop, evildoer! The antagonizer, she's this evil supervillain who's trying to wipe out humans with her ants. And the mechanist protects us with his robots. And when they fight in town, it's incredible! There's all these lasers and biting and blood, and it's crazy! And then my uncle says, I need to stay inside. He says it's dangerous. This is serious business, Derek. <laughs> yeah, I guess. There's no one to play with. Everyone is so serious. It really kind of sucks. But the antagonizer's strong and forceful, and the mechanist, he's smart and good. They make things fun. Well, exciting, anyway. I bet it's awesome to be them. Maybe they'll let me be their sidekick.
You mean the superheroes? Yeah, I'll try to watch all of their fights. That's easy. The antagonizer's suit makes her super agile, but I guess her ants are pretty weak on their own. Just watch out for her royal guard. The mechanist robots are a lot tougher, and his suit makes him super smart. I don't think he has any weaknesses. Well, maybe one. Since he's a good guy, he's not as ruthless as the antagonizer. Like, he'd never hurt an innocent like me, if he could help it. I don't know much about her, except she really, really doesn't like people. That's kind of cool. I mean, sometimes people are jerks. I think her lair is somewhere in the caves to the north of the city. I've seen her ants down there once in a while. Joe Porter said he found out something about her, but my uncle won't let him tell me. He says, don't encourage the poor boy. I knew the mechanist back when he was just a normal hero. He used to be called Scott. Then he fixed up stuff around town. But one day, the antagonizer killed his favorite robot, and I told him he ought to fight back against her like a real superhero. Ever since then, he's been up on his forge in the back of the robot shop on the hill, working to protect us all from the antagonizer. No way! Don't stop them, they're awesome! Unless, maybe you're going to be a superhero too. You could be called Super Humongous and fight them with an army of super mutants. Just stumbled into town? He sure picked a fine day for it, with the crazies out there. Here, have a drink on the house. Welcome to Canterbury. I'm Joe Porter. I make sure folks around here can get a meal when they need it. We do our best. Well, Dom and Roe do their best. I just make sure they've got enough food so they can keep on doing their best. You ever find yourself starving around here, drop by Dot's Diner. We don't charge much, but don't expect any more freebies. Best place I ever worked in, and I guess I've worked about everywhere there is. We get some weird types passing through, but it's stable enough for a guy to make an honest living. I don't really see what more men can ask for. You mean apart from having cheesy names? Actually, I think I might know something useful. One of the traders told me she sounded like a girl he used to know. Girl's whole family was wiped out by ants not long before she showed up here. But they never found any trace of her body. Said her name was Tanya Kristoff. That might just be our little antagonizer. Bye. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? This is Canterbury Commons, where dirty old lechers get rid of everything they picked up on the road. Unless it's not treatable, that is. And I'm Machete. Dom and me make sure nobody starts anything stupid in town. Keep that in mind, okay? Good guess. I was the toughest defender they ever saw in Lamplight. I earned my nickname fighting off a mole rat with a knife as big as my arm. When I left, I figured I'd pass on a cushy place like Big Town. I ended up here. Dom took me on as a guard. And that's that. I know Dom doesn't want me just killing them. He and the Mechanist used to be friends or something. All I know is, next time they come to town, I bet I could solve the whole problem with one bullet for each of them. This whole place would fall apart if it weren't for Dom and me keeping anyone from causing too much trouble. Fat old Roe may think he runs the place, but it's only because Dom lets the idiot. Newcomer to town, huh? Well, I'm... Dominic Delisadro, and welcome to Canterbury Commons. 
try to ignore the idiots in the costumes. Popular activities around town are trading, listening to row yap, and burying thieves in unmarked graves. Of course, we ran out of thieves to bury long ago. Saw to it myself. Might be a dead art. When I can find time for it, sure. In the gardening business, it's the personal touches that make all the difference. Anyway, welcome to town. Don't cause trouble. Threats of violence. Bro hired you to put a stop to their shit, did he? Guess he finally listened when I told him I haven't got the time to do it myself. It's easy enough to hide inside when those two square off, but they're only getting worse about it all. I don't know who she is other than a crazy with an ant suit and a chip on her shoulder for humanity. She wasn't much trouble by herself, really. Her attacks were a joke, but at least stories of her kept some of the raiders at bay. If it helps, she was always attacking from the Warrens up north. Maybe you can find her ant nest in there. You mean Scott Walensky? I refuse to call him by that ridiculous name just because his head got a screw loose. He used to be a damn good friend, and not just because he fixed my guns up. Now he spends all his time up in that bot shop just thinking about fighting that ant agonizer. Hardly even recognizes his own name anymore. If you could just make either one of them stop fighting, it'd do the trick. You probably wouldn't have to worry about the other one. I can't imagine Scott attacking the town with his robots, and that ant agonizer girl was never much more than a sideshow freak by herself. Ro may prefer that you're thorough, but all... Canterbury's a good town. Ro's done a damned good job setting up the place, and no one can handle the day-to-day -day details like him. But when it comes to the big stuff, Life and death matters, putting down thieves, protecting people from raiders who are short-sighted or stupid enough to attack, that sort of thing, pretty much. Anything the man can't solve by talking at it. And don't misunderstand, he can solve a lot of things that way. I'm about the rarest thing out here in the wastes, a mercenary who lived long enough to retire. I used to sell my services around here, so it was a natural place to settle down. Not a bad sort of retirement, honestly. If you're done asking questions, I'm sure.
you got on your mind? Yes, by all means, let's. Thank you. 